What's going on everybody? Today we're traveling to one of the most famous mountain towns in the country, and that is Breckenridge, Colorado. In this video I'm going to share with you my favorite places to visit and hikes to do, and a few hidden gems along the way. This is going to be a comprehensive travel guide. Also on my channel I have dozens of other top 10s and travel guides from Colorado, around the country, and across the globe. So hit that subscribe button and let's dive right into one of my favorite places in the world. This is my top 10 hikes and places to visit in Breckenridge, Colorado. Breckenridge is located about 90 minutes from downtown Denver and just under a two hour drive from the International Airport. It's an amazing place to visit year round from hiking, backpacking, and bagging 14ers in the summer to skiing and snowboarding in the winter. Breckenridge is an outdoor enthusiast dream destination. First up, we're hiking to Mohawk Lakes. The trailhead for this is Spruce Creek Trailhead. There is also an upper Spruce Creek Trailhead for those that have four wheel drive. But with our car, we parked at the lower trailhead. Plus, the last time we did this hike, there were a bunch of very confusing signs saying some subtrails and trailheads were closed, but everything open and still accessible. It was confusing, but this time when we visited, we parked at the lower trailhead alongside most of the other cars. On this hike, you will get to see a handful of lakes, plus Continental Falls Waterfall and Mayflower Lake. From the trailhead, this hike is roughly 8.4 miles round trip with 2,100 feet of elevation gain. That is if you go all the way to the last lake. The beginning of the trail is through trees on a dirt road, but once you reach the water Waterfall, this point forward is beautiful every single step. And if you have it in you, I definitely do recommend hiking to the furthest lake. Next up is Quandary Peak 14er, which is likely the most famous hike in Breckenridge. For those that may not know, a 14er is a mountain that is more than 14,000 feet above sea level. Colorado has 58 14,000 foot peaks, and Quandary is considered one of the easier ones accessible year round. It stands tall at 14,265 feet. I've done it both in the summer and the winter, and it's a beautiful day out in the mountains. If you're just flying in from sea level, I wouldn't recommend going for this the next day like some seem to do. Even though it's quote unquote an easy 14er, there's still inherent danger and you should probably acclimate before hiking any peak this tall. Quandary is roughly a seven mile round trip hike with 3,400 feet of elevation gain. Granted, you take the standard route up. You do need a parking reservation for this hike during the summer months. This is due to crowds and not enough parking or infrastructure. You can get a half day or full day parking reservation. The day of the week does change the price, but half days range between $10 and $20 and full days range between $30 and $55. There is also a shuttle that's free for locals or $7 otherwise. Because of all of this, if you plan on hiking Quandary Peak, it is best to plan this outing ahead of time. And I will touch a little bit more on parking later in this video because this is the trailhead for a few other places on this list. Next up is Willow Lakes, which will be a short drive north of Breckenridge to the trailhead just outside of Silverthorne. The trailhead is called Willow Brook Trailhead, but if you search Willow Lakes in Google Maps, it'll automatically show up. The trail is 11.6 miles round trip with 2,750 feet of elevation gain. The grades aren't overly steep, but since this hike is so long, the elevation does add up. We just hiked this trail last summer and it blew us away. It was so beautiful. The peaks are jagged and have a unique look to them compared to other alpine lake hikes in the state. We hiked the trail for sunrise and had it all to ourselves. It was awesome and we really enjoyed just hanging at the lake shore and lounging out for a few hours. And then as we make our short drive back to Breckenridge, it'd be a shame to go through this video without mentioning Dillon Reservoir. It's the massive freshwater reservoir in Summit County just off of I-70. It's always worth taking the rest stop to see this. And if you're looking for a specific destination on the water, a good one to check out is Sapphire Point Overlook. Next up is less of a hike and more of a destination, and that is Isaac Hearthstone, a 15 foot tall sculpture in the woods just a few minutes away from downtown. It's deemed the Troll of Breckenridge. To get here, you're gonna head to Trollstingen Trailhead next to Illinois Gulch Trailhead. Once you park, it's only a few hundred feet down a paved path to reach the trail. The sculpture was made by a Danish artist named Thomas Dambo, and he built it originally for the annual Breckenridge International Festival of Arts, but now it is here to stay for visitors to come and enjoy. At number five, we have the Blue Lakes, which is not to be mistaken with the Blue Lakes down in Telluride by Sneffels. The Blue Lakes of Breckenridge are located just one mile west of Quandary Peak Trailhead. It is a rough dirt road, but we drove up it no problem in my Corolla, and you do not need a parking reservation to visit Blue Lakes. The lakes are beautiful with surrounding mountain views that include North Star Mountain, Wheeler Mountain, Fletcher Mountain, and Quandary Peak. There are two lakes here. The last time we came, the gate was closed for driving to the upper lake, so we had to park near the lower lake and hike from there. This stop is what you make of it. It can be a quick roadside stop for a photo op, or you can pack your bag for a quick walk around the lakes. Either way, it's a great place to visit. And a side note, it's also the trailhead for Fletcher Mountain 13. After Blue Lakes, we're heading to Sawmill Reservoir, which is tucked away in the neighborhoods just below Breckenridge Ski Resort. This is less of a hike and more of a leisurely walk. It's a 1.3 mile loop with 200 feet of elevation gain, but half of this is walking around this beautiful body of water. 
The colors were rich and the reflections were in full force, and this place was much cooler than we had anticipated. We also saw a few people fishing when we visited. I'm not sure what fish are here, but if I was a fisher, this place seems like it would be a vibe to just post up and fish at. And just south of Reservoir is Peak 8 Super Connect and Snowflake Chair just to the north, so you will have great views of the resort and the gondolas as they go by. Next up is McCullough Gulch. So we're heading back over to Quandary Trailhead as it is the same trailhead for this hike. These two hikes used to have different trailheads, but ever since the parking reservation system was put into place, McCullough Gulch now shares the same trailhead. Earlier, I mentioned you would need a parking reservation for Quandary. The same goes for McCullough Gulch. You can get this on hikequandary.com. The half day reservation is recommended for McCullough Gulch or trail runners, where the full day is recommended for Quandary. To start this hike, you will be hiking along a dirt road until you reach the old trailhead, and if you're lucky, as you're walking, you might be able to catch the shuttle to shave off half a mile or so. And then once you reach the old trailhead, from here it is 6.4 miles round trip with 1600 feet of elevation gain. So if you're unlucky and can't catch the shuttle, then from the car, it'll be more like eight miles with 2000 feet of elevation gain. On the hike, you will get to see a beautiful waterfall that cascades for hundreds of feet. And then once you make it to the lake, you'll have stunning views of the mountains and the north face of Quandary Peak on the other side of the water. For our next place, we're actually going to be hiking to it as an extension of the previous hike to McCullough Gulch. At number 8, we have Pacific Tarn, the highest named lake in the lower 48 states of the country. The lake stands tall at 13,420 feet above sea level, right below Pacific Peak. The mountain itself is a Centennial 13er, otherwise known as one of Colorado's tallest 100 mountains. The way to get to Pacific Tarn is via the McCullough Gulch Trail, again sharing the same trailhead as Quandary. However, to reach the Tarn, you will continue past McCullough Gulch, veering northeast on less obvious trail and then once you hike past the lake on your right at 12,700, there will be a steep and loose rock gully that will take you straight up to the tallest lake in the country. From the trailhead, you're looking at about 11.5 miles round trip with 2,600 feet of elevation gain. The lake is absolutely stunning, but I would only recommend this to those that have backcountry experience, good navigation skills, offline maps downloaded, and a good weather window. And for the parking reservation, this is one that you'll definitely want the full day for. At number nine, we're heading up to the Continental Divide at 11,542 feet above sea level to Hoosier Pass. This is a stunning mountain pass that is typically open year round as it is fully paved and connects Breckenridge with Fairplay. This destination can either be enjoyed as a scenic drive on the pass, or you can hike the Hoosier Pass Loop, which is a 2.8 mile round trip hike with 700 feet of elevation gain. This will take you up to a sub-summit of North Star Mountain 13er, and along the trail you'll have views of the mountains and Breckenridge every step of the way. And to the south, you'll also have phenomenal views of Montgomery Reservoir. One note though, there are areas of private land close to the trail, so please, as always, be respectful when visiting these places, only hike on public trails, and please practice leave no trace principles. Last up but not least, at number 10, we have the Decalibron, the trailhead for which is Kite Lake Trailhead, just a few miles off of a side road after driving over Hoosier Pass to the south. This is a hike that, in theory, allows you to summit four 14ers in one hike. The hike is seven miles round trip with 3,200 feet of elevation gain, and the summits, in theory, would include Mounts Democrat, Cameron, Lincoln, and Bross. There is a big asterisk on this one, though. Some of this hike is on private property where the owners do not want any hikers on their land. There's been quite the saga following this whole debate. As of July of 2023, to my knowledge, you must sign a waiver to access the area, which includes the summits of Democrat and Lincoln, but Bross is still not accessible at all. This video contains footage from the last eight years. I haven't hiked any of this trail in a very long time, so all I can say is please, please, please do your research prior to hiking this trail. Things may change depending on when you watch this video. Permits may be put into place. Who knows? And if you don't feel like researching any of this, then please do not do this hike and choose any of of the other hikes on this list instead. One last bonus location I'm going to add is Clinton Gulch Dam Reservoir, which is a beautiful body of water just off the side of Highway 91. By way of the bird, this is only three miles from Breckenridge, but you do have to drive around the mountains and past Copper Mountain, so it does take about 30 minutes of driving. Nonetheless, this is a very cool roadside stop, and if you're ever heading to Leadville, you'll pass this anyway, so make sure to stop and get a quick photo. That's going to wrap up this travel guide. On my channel, like I mentioned, I also have a top 10 traveling and hiking guide for Colorado as a whole, Ure, Rocky Mountain National Park, Glenwood Springs, and the best day hikes from Denver, plus travel guides, top 10s, and hiking vlogs from across the globe. So hit that subscribe button, check out some of the other videos to help plan your next adventure, and I will see you later. Thanks so much for watching.